Well, good morning, everybody. Good to be out with you today. Hope that you are doing extremely well on this Thursday. Uh, I trust that you've had a wonderful week. Uh, and man, we're getting closer now to the, to the weekend. We've got Sunday services, all that good stuff, and excited about that. Uh, we're also right in the middle of Vacation Bible School. Thank you so much for your prayers over the last several days. We've got two nights left tonight, Friday night, so please continue to pray. Uh, for our vacation Bible school. We had a lot of young people here last night. Not sure the exact count, uh, but we had a good number of young people. So thank you so much uh, for your prayers. And I would encourage if you can make it out, we'd love to have you out. Uh, come uh, see what's going on here at the church, and we'd love to have you out for that. All right, we're going to be in Romans chapter number two. Hit that share button real quick, uh, and we'll get started here in just a moment. We're finishing up chapter number two this morning and thank you so much for being on hey i don't wherever you're watching from doesn't matter hit that share button also comment throughout our power up man it's a little chilly this morning hope that you're doing well maybe it's warmed up a little bit since uh, since i've been here but uh, it has been just a little chilly and get to warm up a little bit uh, maybe later today all right here we go romans chapter two let's look at verse number 24 kind of backtrack just a little bit here and then get into uh, some verses for today. Verse 24 says, For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you as it is written. Okay? So we noted that that the Jews were not an accurate representation of what God wanted for uh, mankind to see. They had received the law, but they did not practice the law in their hearts. Okay? So they uh, they were hypocrites. They looked the part on the outside, but their hearts were not right with God. And we then get an example of that here beginning verse number 25 and working its way down through the rest of the chapter let's look at verse 25 for circumcision verily profiteth if thou keep the law but if there be a breaker of the law thy circumcision is made uncircumcision okay so we look at the reality of the law the law uh as we know cannot be completely fulfilled and so uh, what Paul is saying here, he says, man, guys, if you uh, circumcision profiteth if you keep the law. Can you keep the law? And we continue, therefore, verse 26, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? Okay, and so we see this example of uncircumcision keeping the righteousness of the law somebody who is uncircumcised keep the righteousness hey is not their own circumcision counted for circumcision okay and verse 27 it shall not uncircumcision which is by nature uh, if it fulfill the law judge thee who by the letter and circumcision does transgress the law you gotta remember what's happening what's kind of being discussed and laid out here is just the jew and the gentile uh, the Jews viewed the Gentiles in a very negative light because they did not follow the law. And we see that even in the early church playing out. Paul talking to Timothy about, uh, about this and the, these young men of the faith about circumcision and so on. Uh, and so uh, we have the, the Jews uh, not viewing the Gentiles as being believers because of because they are not circumcised. We see that playing out even in the book of Galatians, that circumcision being added to salvation. Uh, and the Jews kind of missed the point of circumcision. Uh, the Jews were very much focused on the outward presentation of themselves. And man, they would applaud each other uh, and honor each other because they looked the part, because they had followed the law to the T, or what they thought was to the T. But they missed, uh, they missed really the, the purpose of the law, if you will. And as we note, verse 28, it says, For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart. In the spirit and not in the letter, whose praises 
not of men, but of God. The Jew would look for the praise of men. Hey, look at what I am doing. You think of the, the religious leaders of Jesus' day. Jesus called them hypocrites because they were circumcised. Man, they looked apart. They were trying to live according to the law, but their hearts were not right. They were outwardly, outwardly, uh, they looked good, but inwardly they were not. And we see that uh, verse number 29, but he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart. Okay, now, <clears throat> let's let's take that, let's make some application for us today. There are a lot of people uh, that outwardly, they look good. Uh, and let's take it this way. There are some Christians that outwardly look good. They present themselves in a positive light, man. They look the part. They talk the talk. They walk the walk. But I'll say this, they are far from God because their heart is not right. And, and I think there are people that, that come into church and, uh, man, they put on a good show, but at home and at the workplace, they do not live for the Lord. They do not live for Jesus Christ because their heart is not right. I think, what is, uh, just kind of think uh, in your mind, what is the purpose of revival? Why do we have revival services? Because our hearts tend to wander from the Lord. Because we need that revival in our spirit. Okay, we, we talked, Romans chapter 2 began talking about judging uh and a lot of people say hey judge not don't judge me and we talked about that when in reality we make judgments every single day about every decision that we make and about people we say don't judge me but you know what we don't let our kids hang out with certain people certain places do certain things hey that's that's judging uh and you know what that's a good thing uh because you you do that for protective purposes now you take Romans chapter 3 now as, as you look at where we're at. The Jews, uh, man, it was an outward show. And what would they do? They would judge the Gentile. They would judge those that did not uh, follow the law to the T. And what was the reason for that judging? It was to build themselves up and make them look better. And hey, look at me. And I think there's a lot of Christians like that as well. Listen. I think, I think uh, making judgments is good, uh, and it is, it is necessary, okay? You're going to open your refrigerator door today, sometime today, and you're going to pull something out. You're going to pull out, you're going to pull out something that you want to eat, uh, and you're going to make a judgment call. I want that, I don't want that, okay? As we, as we consider the, the judging aspect of things, we got to realize the reason for that judgment. It is not there to build ourselves up. That's what the Jews were doing. They were judging the, 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 what they called the Gentiles dogs. They were judging those Gentiles just to make themselves look good. And you know what? Their heart was not right. And if we're not careful as Christians, uh, we can take our standards, our convictions that, hey, we find in the scripture, don't get me wrong, that we believe that this is the way that God would have us to live. But we can take those standards, those convictions rooted in scripture, and we can begin to judge people. Why? To build ourselves up. And we have now, in our Christian life, created the same situation that the Jews and Gentiles were in. Now, I'm not, saying, I'm not saying don't judge, but what's the reason for our judging? Uh, uh, the reason for our judging ought not, to be, ought not to build us up, but rather it ought to be to bring others to Christ. And here are the Jews. They looked on the outside. They looked the part, but their heart was not right. And shame on the Christian who comes into the Lord's house, who, who, who opens their Bible and does their devotions, uh, a man looks the part but does not have a heart that is right with God. Man, we're just going through the motions. We're not real, as we mentioned yesterday. We ought to strive to be real in our Christianity. Our convictions, our standards ought to be rooted in the Word of God. They ought to be rooted in a love for God, in our response to God's love for us. Uh, and 
and, and we ought to we ought to make sure that that what how we portray ourselves on the outside is a result of what God is doing on the inside. We can't get it backwards. There's a lot of people. I, I've talked to some people who say, "Man, I'm just not ready for this God thing yet." I need to work on myself first. No, you need to let God work on you. And you need to allow God to grow you, to develop you. And you need to allow uh, godly people to be used by God to disciple you. Then we'll see that that change. But you know what? God is the only one that can change a heart. God is the only one that can save. And it's not you getting right first and then trusting Christ. No, it's trusting Christ and then allowing God to change you. That is so very important. Uh, and so let's not, Christian, let's not get on our high horse, if you will, and look down at the world and, and, and condemn them. The Bible tells us this in Romans chapter number, number 5 and verse number, uh, I'm not sorry, not, not Romans chapter 5, uh, but the Bible tells us uh, that they are, the world is condemned already. Uh, and they, they are on their way to a lost sinner's hell separated from God forever. And they don't need us, our judging them because they don't fit our mold of what we would say is Christianity. The world needs Jesus. Uh, and yes, there is that unwritten law in their heart, but just like, here's, here's the reality. The world can reject God uh, and yes, they have the, the nature's law, their conscience, but they can still reject the Lord. Uh, and, and just like, man, Christians, we reject the Lord as well. We reject God's leading. Man, when God works in our heart and convicts us of sin, and we say, no, that's not for me. Uh, God, I'm content in my sin. Hey, the world rejects the Lord, and Christians reject the Lord sometimes too. Uh, and so let's make sure that our Christianity is just not some outward expression, just an outward show, but rather an, uh, it, it is uh, our Christianity is an inward choice to love the Lord, to live for the Lord, and it shows forth in everything that we do. Do people see the love of God in you? The Jews, what did people see? The Jews were very good at judging and pointing out everybody else's fault and what parts of the law they were not following. Those Gentile dirty dogs, look at them, they're not circumcised. And some, unfortunately, I think some of us as Christians are, are good at that as well. And rather than teaching, discipling, exercising patience, rather than witnessing, we're so good at pointing out everything that everybody else is not doing. Now, it, now some people take this to the extreme. They'll say the don't, don't judge me thing, and they'll say, you know what? Hey, I can live my life how I want. Galatians tells me about the liberty that I have as a Christian. And you know what? It's my Christian liberty. Okay, this is not a license to sin. Listen, as we have mentioned, there ought to be a definite difference in how we live this life because of Christ. I don't do things, be, some things, because of my love for Christ. I have certain standards and convictions because I love Jesus. And maybe someday we'll get into uh, the scriptures where uh, the slave in the Old Testament, where the slave is given an opportunity after his years of service, is given an opportunity to go out free. And we know what the slave says. He says, I will not go out free. I love my God. Uh, I love my wife. I love my family. And I will not go out free. Just because we think that we can do something doesn't mean that we should. Doesn't mean it's right. And it's because we love the Lord. Listen, allow God to change you from the inward. And you know what? As God changes the inward, it leads us into uh, the outward. Okay? Uh, so let's, uh, uh, we're going to end with that with chapter number two. And we'll begin chapter number three uh, uh, tomorrow here. Okay. So let's, uh, uh, let's greet those that have commented live here. And so thankful for everybody being on today, Brian and Cindy. Good morning to you guys. Hope you have a great day. Becky, good to have you on. 
Uh, have a wonderful day. Karen, good morning to you as well. Paula, good morning to you. Thanks for watching. David and Claudia, thank you for being on today. Charlie and Marsha, good to have you both on. Dennis and Geraldine, good to have you on as well. Uh, Robin Rogers, good to have you on. Hope you have a great day. Thank you for watching. Perry, good morning to you. Uh, and uh, uh, Perry, I uh, got your other, other message there, and I'll be praying uh, uh, with, with you about this. And uh, uh, so, so sorry to hear about the loss there. Uh, and uh, I would love to connect if we can do that, okay? Uh, have a great day, everybody. Lord bless you all. Uh, be in prayer for our Vacation Bible School. Uh, we've uh, had a good attendance, and uh, God has given us a tremendous opportunity to share the gospel, and, and we're excited about what God is doing, the decisions that have been made. All right, Lord bless you all. Have a great day, everybody. Lord willing, we'll touch base again tomorrow morning.